Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We are built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Honda's Talon was big news when it was released seven months ago. It was Honda's first foray into the pure sport side-by-side -side market, and it showed us just what was possible when that company tapped into its massive storehouses of high-performance technology and know-how. Since its intro, the Talon has proven quite clearly that there were a lot of people waiting for a Honda Sport side-by-side. -side. Sales of the Talon have been strong. When we were at the intro, we had an opportunity to sit down with Jeremy McGuire from Honda to get the background info on how and why their engineers designed and built the Talon the way they did, and why they chose to build two different models right out of the gate. There's a couple aspects that make the Honda Talon unique. The first is the engine, the drivetrain of the DCT transmission is unique in that it's all sealed. It doesn't require maintenance other than obviously changing the oil, but it creates a very direct connected feel for the, for the customer, as well as our DQR, which is kind of our Honda DNA, which is our durability, our quality, and our reliability. And really that's what, not only building a performance product, but building one that's gonna last and stand up to the rigorous use of our customers. When Honda intros a new model, they do it in a very slow and methodical manner. Oftentimes, a new model can take years to get the updates and features that we ask for from day one. Honda came with two distinct models right out of the gate to make sure there was a Honda Talon for every type of user. So the two vehicles that the Honda Talon is today is we have the S2R and the S2X, and we created two distinct variations knowing that our customer base spans across uh, the entire US. And so we did not want to create a single vehicle that we had to sacrifice various aspects of to make only that one unit. So we created those two variations. The most unique aspect that makes them different is the suspension and the chassis. Uh, we extended the wheelbase on the R model. We made it slightly wider and gave it longer suspension stroke as well. If there was one thing a bunch of us here at Dirt Tracks were skeptical about when we first got the official word that Honda did in fact have a sport side-by-side, -side, it's that they would put enough horsepower under the hood so that it could keep up with its competition. We took our 1,000 engine out of the Pioneer, but we didn't just shove it into the, the Talon. We made sure that we increased the performance of it to create that performance experience. So we actually increased the horsepower, making 104 at the crank, and we did that through a lot of internal component changes, um, also leveraging some of our recent development of the Africa Twin model. If I'm completely honest, I have to admit, I've never really felt like Honda engineers put enough time and effort into how passengers and drivers fit and feel inside their side-by-side -side vehicles. The Talon is a completely different story though. So on the Honda Talon, while it looks good on the outside, we also put a lot of effort on the interior as well. Not only just having it match the exterior from an appearance standpoint, but also paying special attention to how the vehicle is laid out from the steering wheel to the range of motion, to the seat adjuster on the driver's side, the very uh, automotive style, a direct connect link um, for each one of the adjustments, as well as the high bolstering around the seating surfaces. And then as well, recognizing that this vehicle is not just for the driver, but it's also for the passenger. And so we spent equally as much time making sure that the feet positions for the passenger uh, were such to provide a comfortable riding experience, as well as the infinitely adjustable T-handle, uh, which they can adjust based on their, uh, their size. So I think the key that Honda wants to emphasize for the tail end is that we have a package that can suit a wide range of customers, ones that are wanting to ride in more tight uh, technical terrain, or somebody that has a desire to ride in high speed uh, type train, uh, more uh, West Coast type usage, but not just riding in that type of train is enough, but also something that makes that experience fun and exciting through the DCT transmission, the ergonomics of the vehicle, the feel of the vehicle, how it sounds, and the fact that it's going to get you back home at the end of the day, something uh, that Honda takes a lot of pride in with our durability and our quality and reliability. Is the talent as good as Honda says it is? Anyone in our group who's ridden one has come away extremely impressed from the power and power delivery to the ride and handling to the overall fit and finish of the whole vehicle. Interestingly though, Honda's not done with the Talon just yet. So stay tuned for more info from Honda on an upcoming episode. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. There's nothing I love to see more than an established manufacturer pushing their own boundaries and improving on the products they sell. Yamaha has been on a mission over the past decade to overhaul their lineup with new and exciting models that give ATV and side-by-side -side customers exactly what they've been asking for. 
Sometimes there's no reason to overhaul a model completely though. Giving a vehicle a makeover just for the sake of it is wasteful and may not actually result in better value or performance for the customer. If you really look at the industry though, there's one thing that drives manufacturers to change and improve products more than anything else, competition. For 2019, Yamaha is working on both ends of this spectrum. A few of their models literally have no competition whatsoever, while a few of their other models reside in the most hotly contested classifications in the industry. The sport ATV market has all but disappeared. At one point, it was booming, but now it's just barely holding on. And in reality, it's thanks to Yamaha that it's holding on at all. Yamaha is the only manufacturer making sport ATVs right now. Luckily for those who are still buying sport ATVs, Yamaha's current offerings, the Raptor 700R and the YFC 450R, are still excellent ATVs that offer impressive capabilities and performance. For 2019, they each get a mild massaging in the form of two special edition models. Now, special editions typically don't include any major mechanical changes over the standard units. It's typically just cool colors and graphics and trick bolt-on parts. And that's exactly what we're getting with the 2019 Raptor and YFZ. They each get new blue, black, and gray plastics with accompanying graphics, and while looks are subjective, I think they look pretty slick. More important than the look, though, is the extras you get with the SE package. On the Raptor, you're getting a GYTR aluminum front grab bar and GYTR aluminum heel guards. On the YFC, you're getting the same GYTR front grab bar and a GYTR nerf bar setup that includes new adjustable foot pegs. These are things that most YFZ and Raptor customers add to their vehicles anyway, so they really do increase the value of the vehicle straight from the factory. Mechanically, the Raptor 700 and YFZ 450 are unchanged from last season, which may leave you asking, how can we say Yamaha is continuing to pursue the Sport ATV segment with only a special edition type update? And the answer is simply this. They have no competition here, so arguably Yamaha could get away with doing nothing. Instead, they're looking at ways to add some bling and a little bit more performance to give their customers more value. The next piece of big news comes to Yamaha's highest performance side-by-side, -side, the YXZ 1000R. This vehicle resides in one of the most hotly contested segments in the industry, and it has a firm hold on its place in this segment because it's the only sport side-by-side -side currently available with a fully manual transmission. But ever since day one, the YXE has been overshadowed, unfairly in my opinion, by the higher horsepower turbocharged units. Even with its highly efficient manual transmission, it just couldn't keep up with the vehicles that make 175 plus horsepower. For 2019, Yamaha is addressing this in a very similar way to how they originally addressed the same problem in their snowmobile division. Instead of offering a turbocharged model straight from the factory, they're instead offering a dealer-installed turbo kit for your YXE available right from Yamaha through their parts catalog. While there are no official numbers, the claim of a 60% increase in horsepower could potentially put the final number as high as 185 ponies, which would make the YXE turbo the most powerful side-by-side -side in the industry. The question we have to ask ourselves is this, will Yamaha eventually do exactly what they did on the snow side and offer the turbo kit pre-installed right from the factory. This is what would make the most sense to us, and it's what eventually happened with Yamaha's Sidewinder snowmobile, which is claimed to make, ready for this? 180 plus horsepower. Another interesting point that needs to be made relates to efficiency. We already know that the power loss through a CVT transmission is somewhere right around the 30% mark. Power loss through a manual transmission is arguably around 15%, which means a CVT-equipped side-by-side -side would need to make approximately 200 horsepower to match the rear wheel power of a turbo YXZ. The other important numbers we need to talk about relate to dollars and cents. The YXZ turbo kit retails for $54.99 US. It's gonna cost about 1,500 bucks to have it installed at your dealer, so that's a total of right around six grand. Add this to the price of a base model manual shift YXZ 1000R that retails for $1899 US, and you've got a total investment of around $25,000, which is actually cheaper than a Maverick X3 XDS Turbo R. If you're a sport class off-road enthusiast of pretty much any genre, Yamaha's got something to keep you interested. For 2019, improvements to their sport ATV lineup add value, while a potential 60% increase in horsepower to the YXE pushes it to the front of the class in the pure sport side-by-side -side marketplace. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. Okay, Jared, it's that time of year where we all get to go out, have some fun with off-road toys, and what goes better with off-road toys than off-road performance accessories? And we all know the MBRP brand. 
a Canadian-made exhaust manufacturer that's known for its reliable gains, precision design, and guaranteed fit. And today we have Jared Heshka from MBRP here to help us better understand what went into this all-new muffler for the Outlander G2 chassis ATVs. So Jared, you told me that there was over a year's worth of design in this muffler. Tell me why it took so long and what exactly you guys came up with. Absolutely. Well, we went into designing this exhaust with two things in mind. One, no use of a fuel programmer. And two, have a nice sound, an enhanced sound over stock, but nothing that's obnoxiously loud. So you can easily ride all day long and, you know, enjoy the tone. So it took us just over a year to actually develop this design. Um, you know, we went from four inch, which kind of something standard you see on some of our side-by-side -side systems, to oval, to a bunch of different designs. Again, 10 alterations went into finally arriving at a five inch muffler design. And what, what did we get out of this new? So this is a totally new five inch package. You guys don't have this on anything else currently. So this was a complete new muffler setup. And what exactly is it going to give the Outlander rider? What this is going to give is an enhanced tone over stock, um, you know, and, and something that's e very easy to install as well too. But for the Outlander rider and everything like that, like I said, a good tone, no use of a program or anything like that. So it's just a bolt-on system. This new muffler is a departure from the well-known four-inch body MBRP exhaust and increases by 25% to improve overall flow and also lower exhaust temps. This larger diameter exhaust body also keeps overall sound at a respectable level with moderate sound improvements over the stock exhaust. So Jared, we know that the manufacturers are getting better at pulling the absolute most power possible from engine packages and vehicles like this Outlander, but that doesn't mean that there aren't benefits to an exhaust system like yours from MBRP. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And as we talked about some power gains and everything too, I mean, it gains one horsepower. I'm not gonna tell you it gains 10, like that's one true number. And one thing I really wanna key in on is that we measure our dyno at, it's dynoed at the wheel. True one horsepower gain, I'm not, like I said, not gonna tell you it's 10. Yeah, and that's one horsepower at the wheels, so we have to consider that most people are going to claim horsepower at the crank, not horsepower at the wheels. With our alterations and everything, that involves changing internals, you know, and we won't release it until we get it right and it makes sure there is a performance gain. So that's why it took so long to kind of release. Um, on the durability side, this is a 304 stainless body, so you can easily polish it. There's no coatings or anything to scratch off, you know, an easy buff wheel and some metal polish and it'll come back to life. All right, so another major benefit is one, a little bit of a weight savings. You're gonna save about two to three pounds on this, uh, but that kind of takes a bit of a back row seat. Uh, what you'll see, this is actually a lower EGTs and everything too with a higher flow muffler. That comes important with, again, longer reliability of your motor and also, you know, better flow and performance. Now, one thing that I really appreciate about the MBRP brand is their fitment. I mean, this stuff isn't gonna take you all day to install, it won't need major assembly, and it goes on with simple to use standard hand tools. It's a job that just about anyone can accomplish in their driveway or garage in only an hour or so, start to finish. And because MBRP guarantees fitment, you're not gonna be left scratching your head about why bolt holes don't line up. These pipes fit first time, every time. So along with fitment being really easy, one of the things that makes fitment super easy is the bevel style clamp that is, that's on here. And that gets rid of the need for a spring and a slip joint, right? Absolutely. And that's gonna take away the possibility of air leakage and overall it's gonna make for what, a, a tighter fit? A much more secure fit too. So you can always tighten it over, the, over time too. Um, but again, yeah, like no leaks or anything like that. So it's yeah. a really, really rigid fit. And a spring and a slip joint in the past, you know, you could move those two pieces and you can feel a little bit of play there. This thing, there is no play whatsoever. But on top of just fitment being really, really good on this pipe, um, it's easy engine management wise as well. Absolutely, yeah, you don't need a program or anything like that. Like as you saw, it was quickly, easily bolted on and you don't have to do anything else. So, you know, once you invest in our brand, you don't have to spend another three, $400 just to get it to run right. You know, we've done the testing, we've done the dyno and flow bench, so we know it performs. So you're gonna get that one horsepower at the wheels, no engine controller, just put the pipe on, that's it, you're done. So Jared, it's been great having you here today. Thank you for helping us to install this and understanding the features and benefits of this new five inch pipe for the Outlander. But I gotta be honest, I need to take this thing out on the trail and get some real world experience because I mean, with a pipe, that's what it's all about. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. Say what you want about Polaris. You absolutely cannot accuse them of being lazy. Year after year after year, they continue to give us products that are better than the previous versions. And products that include the features we ask for. Barely a season goes by after a competitor releases something new that attempts to rival what Polaris has before Polaris themselves hit back harder and faster than ever before. 
The Ranger is the original Polaris side-by-side. -side. It's the longest running side-by-side -side model in their fleet, and over the years, it has enjoyed long stretches with little or no changes or upgrades at all, mostly because it really didn't have any competition back in those days. Today, though, the Ranger has a plethora of competition, and as a result, it has undergone numerous redesigns in only a few short years. The latest addresses a long list of features its most direct competitor, Can-Am's Defender, had that the Ranger didn't. From an almost silly amount of in-dash storage space, including an upper and lower glove box, to space for no less than eight water bottles, to the passenger seat that flips up revealing a space for larger items underneath, to simplified accessory integration, this newest version of the Ranger leaves nothing for its competition to brag about. But as usual, this new Ranger on its own was not good enough for Polaris. It was good enough for us, as Mark clearly articulated in his late season test ride last year, but for Polaris, it needed a little extra. So a bunch of special edition models were released, including the heated and air-conditioned North Star, the ultra gnarly and capable high lifter, and this season, a new model landed in our yard, this one called the Backcountry. So what does the Backcountry Ranger 1000 get that a standard Ranger doesn't? For starters, it gets Polaris's proprietary Pursuit Camo graphics. I'm not normally a big fan of camo, but in this configuration, it both makes sense and it looks pretty rad. But that's just bling, so to speak. The actual meat of the backcountry is much more technical than you might think at first glance. Arched A-Arm's front and rear are an outwardly visible upgrade and provide a massive increase, not in the actual height of the vehicle's ground clearance, but rather in the actual space under the vehicle for obstacles to pass, which may actually be more important than just a taller ride height. It also gets a full snorkel setup, just like the high lifter. Now these snorkels are centrally mounted behind the back seat, and they'll let you take your Ranger deeper than you were ever previously brave enough to go. They look pretty slick too. If you do attempt to test the capabilities of your snorkel setup, you'll be super thankful that Polaris's massive Pro HD 4,500 pound wirelessly controlled winch is factory mounted behind the beefy front bumper. Of course, this is all stuff that you can easily see from the outside. What you can't see is the fully sealed electronics, lowered gear ratios, and the steel reverse drive gear setup. Obviously, ATVs and side-by-sides are meant to get wet and muddy, so you'd think that fully sealed electronics would be commonplace, but you'd be wrong. While many electrical components on a typical side-by-side -side are sealed, not all of them are. With the Ranger Backcountry, Polaris has gone one step above and beyond what's typical to ensure electrical issues due to moisture are all but erased by sealing everything and moving larger components up higher under the hood. The lower final gear ratio is an interesting and somewhat confusing feature in my opinion. This version of the Ranger comes with a set of just 27 inch Maxxis MU 511 and 521 tires, so the lower gearing is not to compensate for a huge set of wheels. But the real reason a lower overall gear ratio was chosen for this vehicle was simply because it allows for smoother, more controlled operation in tight and tricky situations, and it increases the vehicle's towing and hauling capabilities. Both very good things when you're way out in the bush getting stuff done. And since Rangers are speed limited from the factory, even with lower gearing, the overall top speed of the vehicle won't be adversely affected. A known weak link, no pun intended, in a Polaris drivetrain has historically been the chain-driven reverse system. The backcountry gets a new steel gear-driven reverse system that is, for all intents and purposes, bulletproof. It's the same system that's found on the high lifter editions, so if it can handle the abuse the high lifter endures, it can pretty much handle anything. I guess the biggest question I had when I first got my hands on the backcountry was a pretty basic one. Simply put, what is it for? Most special edition vehicles have a very clear and specific intended use, but this one was a bit confusing to me. It has all kinds of extra capabilities, but for what specifically? And therein lies the answer itself. For what? Well, for whatever. The name backcountry implies exploration and adventure, and the features list hints at the ability to go anywhere and do just about anything. What did we do with our Ranger 1000 backcountry? We did exactly what it was meant to do, a little bit of everything. More or less specifically, anything we felt like doing, and it did it all extremely well. From trail riding, to working around the yard and job site, to exploring otherwise untouched places, to getting us in and out of places other side-by-side -side struggle to go, our Ranger 1000 Backcountry did everything we asked it to do without a single complaint. Do you need the Backcountry Special Edition over a standard Ranger 1000 EPS? 
Many people will truly benefit from the extras it includes, but even if you don't officially need it, you can't deny the fact that your garage would look pretty dang cool with one parked inside. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Arctic Cat. Make sure you click to subscribe for even more great content on our YouTube channel. Travel stories, test rides, modifications, you name it, we've got it.